Hi, how you going? Welcome, welcome. Hope you're having a fantastic day wherever you are in the world. And uh, yeah, been a bit quiet, just spending time with family. Mum's not very well. And um, it's school holidays, so yeah. Uh, the war in Pompeii um, shocks me that they would uh, bomb a site like this, but perhaps they were trying to get rid of stuff they don't want people to know about. So in the autumn of 1943, during the Allied push to move up the Italian peninsula, the city of Pompeii was bombed twice in September and October. Rumours have long, aban have long abandoned bounded that some in the LA leadership believed that a Nazi panzer unit was hiding in amongst the ruins of the houses and buildings of the city. I know tanks are good at difficult terrain, but I can't see them successfully moving at many of Pompeii's streets. But it's now as though both raids were accidental rather than deliberate. Regardless, more than 150 bombs were dropped on the ruins, considering causing considerable damage to a number of the houses, the original museum and the palestria. And it's almost lined up like a star fort, isn't it? It's sort of got that old shape of a of a star fort. I was always rather marvelled at the fact that despite heavy damage in the southwest corner of the city to the Palseria, the one bomb that fell upon the amphitheatre landed in the middle of the arena floor, causing it the least damage possible to the structure. So just in here, I think it is, or up in here, one of these two. And that section you can see it's got a big concrete patch over it today. Of course in the aftermath no tanks or even troops were found in the city. As the war moved north and slowly come to an end, Pompeii became the focus of a different sort of military activity, tourism. Troops stationed in and around Italy visited the ruins in huge numbers. A brief account of such visits can be found here. Two such visitors left behind a graffito recording their name in the city found on the wall of the house of the Pacrius Paroculus, also known as the house of Cuspius Panza, an electoral for both men and were found on the walls. It contains the initials of two individuals and the date, 31st of July 1944. The house itself had been excavated first in 1911 and completed between 1923 and 1926, thus making it one of the more recently discovered properties in 1944. As the house still retains extensive wall paintings and intricate floor mosaics, the atrium floor especially, which today cannot be walked on. It must have been quite a sight, a mere 20 years after it was cleared of the volcanic debris. There's no way of knowing anything further about the people that left this inscription AB and AL, even if they were military, but the date says to me that it's unlikely that there were many civilian tourists visiting Pompeii at that time. The manner in which the date is written and a day then month along with the cross on the seven indicates that the person who scratched this was not American in origin, most likely European or uh, blame the Aussies, okay. There are numerous accounts of soldiers visiting ancient sites and cultural landmarks throughout Europe and North Africa during the war. This is the first time I've come across a direct evidence of it myself and I'm sure other graffiti and similar ink must exist undoubtedly have not been recorded systematically. If anyone has come across texts like this, particularly in Pompeii, oh yeah. So, I think they were destroying evidence is what they were doing. So a catalogue of the World War II damage. Some of the darker days in history of Pompeii occurred during the Second World War after an Allied invasion of Sicily during the summer of 1943. The focus of the conflict moved to the southern Italian mainland. The U.S. 5th Army Division, comprised of U.S. Corps and British Corps and the 82nd Airborne Def Division landed on the beach of El Sereno in the early hours of September 9, 1943. The mission of Operation Avalanche was to seize the port of Naples, trap Axis troops in the south and link with the British 8th Army. Although the invasion was initially successful, German forces counter-attacked the entire front between the 12th and 14th of September. Although the Allies sustained heavy casualties, reinforcements and air support stalled the Germans' advance. By the 17th of September, the Germans began to withdraw the north. The 5th Army captured Naples on October 1st, 1943. The US 12th Air Force uh, Command provided strategic and tactical air support to the Operation Avalanche. The combat chronology of the US Army Forces published by the Office of Air Force History cites bombing missions on Pompeii and other nearby towns 
Torrell, Dogeko, and Costello Mayor de Steva. Sorry for saying it wrong, I just can't say them, sorry. So, against highways, railways, marshalling yards, barracks and gun positions on the 13th, 14th, 15th, 17th and 23rd of September, inclement weather prevented further missions on after the 26th of September. An article in number 205, 27th of August 1943, reported that 30 bombs fell on Pompeii in the vicinity of the Forum on the 24th of August 1943. The bombing mission is not listed in the combat chronology. Um, can't really say his name. And he looks like he was probably the supreme archaeologist. He was probably the boss man of archaeology. He authored articles about the American Journal of Archaeology uh, about war damage to Pompeii. He reported the first attack was on 24th of August 1943. The BBC broadcasted that German command post was located in the hotel side Port Marina. There were local rumours of military stronghold and anti-aircraft guns in Pompeii. There were actually were only two anti-aircraft batteries in the area, both outside the walls and some German trucks had parked to the south of the ev evacuations. However, bombardments were experienced between the 13th and 26th of September. No fewer than 150 bombs fell on Pompeii. He directed that stipulated statues and other artifacts be stored in an underground chamber. During one of the raids, he received shrapnel wounds to his leg while cycling outside. Sometime after the Allies landed at San Marino, it became apparent that the Allied command in its section of targets failed to distinguish between the ruins of Pompeii and the modern town in the larger piazza, and later there had been indeed an enemy combat post hosted in the hotel dramatically, dramatically opposite from the famous... I can't say that. Don't want to say it wrong, sorry. On the 9th of uh, November 1943, the Times in London reported an article entitled Damage at Pompeii. We have received from a British officer who recently visited Pompeii an account of the damage done to the place during September when the Germans were encamped on the site and allowed Allied aircraft were obliged to treat it as a military objective. The following is a summary of the damage observed. There is one crater in the arena of the amphitheatre and several near the near misses. The wall of the Gladiators training school was hit in three places. There was a crater in the eastern end of the Villa de Ambosa, to which incomplete evacuation had prevented further damage. The houses of Rex and were hit the Santaloni and the house of someone Rufus were destroyed. The houses the houses used for restoration north of the Villa de that one. and the adjoining house were destroyed. The Temple of Jupiter on the western side of the Forum was hit. The Temple of Apollo and the House of Triplomus North and uh, Via Maria were buried badly damaged. The museum is now in ruins, but how much of the contents perish remains to be disclosed. Uh, I saw a few photos of it. It didn't look like there was much. Um, so the, the head of the active evacuations, the professor, um, he was last heard of at the hospital with the injury he'd received. The officer was told that two bombs had fallen on the Temple of Hercules in the Region 8 and that the houses of Saltast and Penanza in Region 6 had also received a direct hit. Seems to me they were just out to get rid of stuff. This article says that at least 10 um, unexploded bombs, Allied bombs, were at Pompeii. At least ton unexploded bombs dropped by the Allies during the Second World War are hidden within the foundations of the archaeological site of Pompeii, Italian media have reported. Um, in August 1943, <laughs> they say they dropped 165 bombs, okay, in nine different air raves. 96 bombs were located and deactivated. The other bombs ended up in the area of the site that has not yet been evacuated. Many of them were diffused or had hardly exploded, but at least 10 of those explosions explosives are still there. So it goes on about the first time at Sorum. I'll leave the links to this in the description. So there's 66 hectares, 163 acres of the archaeological area, only 44 have been evacuated and at least 10 exploded bombs are yet to be found in the 22 remaining hectares according to the investigation. The Archaeological Museum of Pompeii said there's no risk for visitors. The site has regularly drawn up a reclamation project which is carried out by the military and the the area reclamation was carried out per meter. Coincidentally, 
The 165 bombs were dropped by the Allies in Pompeii on the 24th of August 1943, the same day of year in AD 79 in which the ancient city of Pompeii was formerly believed to have been destroyed by an eruption that killed more than 2,000 people. In October 2018, however, a newly discovered inscription in Pompeii proved that the city was destroyed by Mount Vesuvius after the 17th of October, AD 79, and not on the 24th of August as previously thought. The Pompeii ruins near Naples were discovered in the 16th century, with the first evacuations beginning in 1748. It has become one of the most visited archaeological sites in the world. Goes on about frescoes and all sorts of art that's left there. I'll leave these in the description for you. In this book, this um, view coat here, bombing was mostly carried out in good visibility with very little op opposition, but the intended targets were too close to the site and contemporary bombing methods too inaccurate to avoid damaging the Roman Pompeii. However, as noted, alternative explanations emerged at the time and sometimes reoccur even in recant discussions. The explanations hold that ancient Pompeii was bombed deliberately either because the German troops occupied the site or because Allied commanders mistakenly believed that they did. There are three intersecting strands seen in contemporary media and post-war memoirs and accounts. One is exemplified by the accounts of Allied journalists and military personnel who visited the site after its liberation, other comprising the memories and opinions of contemporary Italian civilians, um, especially Amido Murray, the archaeological superintendent of the Campuria, whose activities at Pompeii at the time have been extremely recently. Another strand derives from broadcast by Radio Londra, the BBC wartime Italian language service following the first bombing of Pompeii. The interrelationships of these strands are complicated by their chronology, with all dates to the events that occur between 25th of August and 2nd October 43. The dates on which the accounts were broadcast or published range from the 29th of August 1943 to 1978. The accounts set out here. So it goes on about when it was first bombed. The RAF suggested over 300 bombs, but they say it was four to six. This is just um, this tells you what what sort of goes on. Shows you Pompeii, the Santorino, Santorino with Mount Vesuvius. Boarding the train. Street scene in modern Pompeii, piazza in modern Pompeii, ruins of ancient, just seems they were hiding something. Part of Operation Avalanche to liberate southern Italy in the autumn of 1943, Allied forces fought to dislodge German soldiers and disrupt their res resupply routes. Important targeted roads, railways, bridges, overpasses were located near the archaeological site of Pompeii, whose ruins were badly damaged by a series of bombings carried out by the American and British fighters. Significant destruction occurred throughout the site. Some of Pompeii's most famous monuments, as well as its museum, were struck. After the war, many of the structures were rebuilt. Ironically, the recent highly publicised collapse of some of the Pomeranian buildings did not involve ancient structures, but rather post-World War II reconstructions. Mitchell bombers flying past Vesuvius on 17th of March to 21, 1944. The crater in the uh, air Just strange.